when you have a lot of data in Notion, it is almost impossible to make any sense of it. But now Notion is giving us the ultimate tool to make sense of all the data that we have inside of our Notion workspace. And this is one of the new features that excites me the most because of all the possibilities that this is going to give us for our business. In fact, I have already made a business decision thanks to this feature. And this new feature are charts. Now we can generate charts that are sourced by the data that we have inside of Notion. But yeah, here you're saying, yeah, all oh, charts, this is not so new. Other apps like ClickUp or so-and-so can also do it. But can those apps also house everything that you need for your business to run? I doubt it. So that's why charts are so incredibly useful in Notion. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to introduce you the feature itself, what it can do, and what is most important, and probably the reason why you click on this video, use cases that we can use charts for our business, and one bonus personal use case. Okay, let's get into it. So first of all, charts, who can use them? Because not everybody will be able to use them. At the time of the release, charts are only available to paid plan users. If you are on a free plan, you will just be able to use one chart in your whole workspace. So what does this mean? The very first chart that you create, you will be able to see it. The other charts that you create, or even if you download a template from someone and it's got a chart, you will not be able to see it. Well, this is one more move from Notions to funnel people into their paid plans. But to me, it kind of makes sense because charts are also a more businessy feature and typically businesses are more willing to pay for their softwares that are going to help them get a return on investment. So I think the move kind of makes sense. Okay, so let's see what this feature can do for us. In order to create a chart anywhere, just press slash chart. And here you will see all the different charts that are available so far. And whenever you select one of them, you will be able to choose where you want to take the data from. If it's from an existing database, that's all fine. And you can also create a new chart from sample data. And here we can see our first chart. So which type of charts do we have at the time of the release? We have four different types, the vertical bar, horizontal bar, line, and donut or pie chart. Here, and this applies to the first three charts, you will be able to modify what is displayed in the X axis and in the Y axis. In the X axis here, you can choose all the different properties and you can sort by ascending, descending, well, this is going to depend on what type of property is this one. And then on the Y axis, you can do the same. You can just count different numbers, you can sum numbers, you can average numbers, like it will totally depend on your use case, the kind of settings that you have in here. But we will see multiple scenarios once we get to the to the use cases. One thing that I want to mention though is the, the color. We do have different kinds of color for the for the charts, but it is not fully customizable. We just have the colorful or just pure colors and that's it. So the only way to modify the colors and not just choose this set of colors, it is to visualize a select or multi-select property, which let's turn this status into a select. And now they have color and this is red, yellow, green. And the only thing that you will have to change is these two. Oh well, and now you have the same colors that you have the multi-selects. This is orange now, so not started is orange. So not started is orange. Okay, so at the time of recording, which is uh, a little bit before this uh, feature is released, uh, we already know of two new features that are also going to be available very soon. One is a drill down, what they have called drill down. For example, right now we can see here that there are two tasks in progress, but there is no way to really see which tasks they are. So now they are working on that whenever you click on it, a new pop-up is going to, to appear showing you the two tasks that are in progress. During my testing, this has been something that I have wanted to do more often than, than you may think. So I'm very happy for this feature. And they're also working on a different kind of chart which they have called number chart. This chart is gonna be able to display you a single number calculated from data from a chart. So I believe that this is gonna be very useful for displaying KPIs or monthly revenue numbers or things like that. Okay, cool. So now we know what charts are, what are the options. Let's get into the use cases. How am I using this for my particular business? As I told you in the beginning of the video, I already used charts to make one business decision. And this came through the chart that I'm going to show you right now. 
for the past three years, I have been gathering the data of where my leads come from, like from which acquisition channel. Because whenever they book a call with me, they're gonna be asked how they met me. And they will choose YouTube, Twitter, email, uh, cold email, whatever. And I had all this data sitting in my Notion, but I didn't use it for anything. So when charts became available to me as a beta tester, I created a similar chart. This I have built with sample data, but I created a similar chart to this one, that it is sales by source. This is the first use case that I want to introduce you. So thanks to the automation that brings me all that lead data about where they met me, I was able to generate this chart. And this chart, what it told me is that most of the revenue that my company earns comes from leads that have seen me for the first time on YouTube. By that time, I was present on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. So since I saw that the overwhelming majority of revenue was coming from YouTube, I decided to only focus on YouTube and ditch the other platforms. I'm just gonna use the other platforms for fun, uh, but YouTube is gonna be where I'm gonna put my main marketing efforts. But there is another thing that we can do with charts related to where leads come from. Because another thing that I've also been tracking is how much money each of my clients pay me in total. This is also an automated process. Whenever they pay me through Stripe, the automation is gonna update the record, adding the amount that they have just paid me. So since I already have all that data, another cool use case is that I can test whether leads that come from YouTube are higher value that leads that come from any other acquisition source. And I mean, I didn't get a, something so exaggerated at this one, but also the quality of clients, well, you for example, is much higher on YouTube than in any other places. So how have I set this up? The data I have here, this sample data, and I, and I have just created properties that I'm gonna need for this example. So we have revenue and we have source. Maybe this is gonna be the name of the, of the person, okay? And the way that I have set this up is, of course, this is a pie chart, and in what to show, we have the source, so where they come from, and then each slide represents the average revenue. And then what I have chosen to do is, because I want to know that this is YouTube, 6.6K, so I have come here and clicked on name and value. So we have these uh, data labels we also have the option to make this a little bit bigger or super big or just very small. I think I like it large. And that is it. It was as simple as, as this. Another thing that we can do that I haven't mentioned is that we can save the chart as PNG. Now it's copied and now I can paste it wherever I want as an image. Look how beautiful. Okay, more use cases. Finances. This was honestly where my mind went the first time that I got access to charts. Now I can see my finances updated in real time in Notion. So now we can create things as this one. Monthly revenue, we can see how much our company has earned. I also have an automation that whenever a client pays me, apart from logging it in the client record, it also logs it in a financial dashboard where I have all my income and I also have automated all my expenses. Whenever I spend something, an automation logs the expense inside of that financial tracker. So I can see my income or my expenses. So therefore I can see my profit. So in my business, I have made this with the, with the profit, but well, you, you, get the, you get the idea. I have this sample data with revenue and with a date. And now I'm gonna show you how this has been created. So this is a line chart that I have made, what is it? Ah, smooth, because I just think that is more beautiful than just like this. And in what to show here, since we have a date, we have other different options. We can group by relative to today, day, week, month, or year. If you have a lot of data, you can even do this by year. So you can compare different years inside of your business. But well, for this example, I decided to group by month. And then we can sort it by old, new, new, old, or whatever we want, and omit zero values. If we have a month with no income and we have this unchecked, so this is going to uh, be zero. And then cumulative, this is kind of useful. So you can see how much you've earned in total. Maybe what I will do is filter this data. So it just shows me the year to date data. 
so I can see all the total revenue or profit that I am accumulating over time. And that is it. I just change the, the color to orange, which is my brand color. And, and that is it. So this was also pretty easy. I mean, you can see once you have the, the data, creating the chart is like a two or one minute thing. Another potential use case that I have also done in my business is I have a lot of recurring expenses, but they come from different areas. Some are automation tools, some are admin tools, some are taxes. So I created a donut chart to see in which area I'm spending the most. That's also kind of useful. So now let's go to the next use case, project management. Here, the data that I have is all tasks with the assignee, with the completion date, and with the status, okay? These are kind of the properties that I'm also using internally to create the charts that I'm going to show you. So the first one is the weekly tasks. This one I love, because here we can filter all the tasks that are due for this particular week. And at the beginning of the week, all the tasks are gonna be not started. But as we progress the week and we complete the tasks, this is gonna get greener, 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 greener until we do all of them. So by Friday, we have the objective of clearing all these colors and make them all green. So I kind of like this, this like a lot because it's kind of a way to gamify our, our task management. Another use case that I like a lot if you're working with a team, it is to see the workload. So here we can again filter tasks by this week. So all the tasks that are due this week and we can then group by, a, by person, by assignee. Like this, we can see who is the most busy. The way that I have set this up is in what to show, I'm just counting because we are counting tasks and then on the Y axis, we are showing the assignee. And now if we are logging, which is the completion date of the tasks, what, which we can do with an automation, whenever the status is done, then the completion date is today, as simple as that. So whenever we complete one task, the completion date gets filled. So then we can build a view that shows us how many tasks have been completed each day. So we can see how productive our team was. Like this, at a glance, I can see that what the F happened on August 7th, why no tasks were completed. The way to set this up was here in the X axis. What I wanna show is the completion date, but by day, because I wanna be more specific and I wanna know what happened every day, sorted all to new. And then here in the Y axis, I just wanna count because the magic here, it is the filter whenever the completion date is not empty. So this means that the completion date has been filled, which means that a task has been completed. So here is where we need a filter. And that is it. This is gonna give me all the tasks that have been completed each day. Okay, next use case, business KPIs. Also one of my favorites. If you're running a business and you've been on business like more than one year, probably you should already be tracking some KPIs, key performance indicators. These are numbers that are gonna tell you whether your business is going in the right direction or not. So for example, I have here two different KPIs, the YouTube views and the leads generated. And here is where I have all the data. So I have the different KPIs with the different results that the idea is that I log them every month. This status, we don't need. Okay, so with this data in the back end, we can create this chart, which is I am filtering by the KPI itself. And then I am visualizing it in this line chart and what to show here is log date by month because I'm logging them by month. If you are logging it every week, so then you're gonna uh, show it by week. And if you are logging them daily, so then you're gonna log them by day. I would also not want to omit zero values. I mean, for YouTube views, it, it doesn't make sense because there is not gonna be a month that I'm gonna be uh, with zero views, but for leads generated, uh, yes. And then in the Y axis, I just want to sum the result, okay? which is the actual KPI number. And then for leads generated, it's exactly the same. I'm just changing the filter to leads generated, and that's it. Here, I am starting to miss one feature that I don't know if it's coming or not, but it will be great that I can kind of put these two charts, one on top of the other, to see if the YouTube views are related to a higher number of leads. 
because maybe I'm focusing on YouTube views as a KPI, but it's not being translated into more leads, which is the objective. So, so far, the only solution will be to copy this, paste it here, and have the two charts like this. And like this, yes, oh, we can see that they are really correlated. Okay, and now to the bonus use case that I wanted to show you that I told you in the beginning of the video, and it's a personal one. So, well, this is my personal home, and here we can see the chart that I, that I told you with the tasks, but here we have the number of minutes that I have done exercise. And this is what I meant that in Notion you can have everything together. I love having my tasks and my exercise side by side. I don't think you can do this in any other app. The way that this data is coming uh, inside of here is uh, by a make.com automation. I'm using my data from Strava and I'm bringing it to a uh, notion. And then I am visualizing it with a chart. Here I can see all the different uh, activities that I do, which is riding my bicycle, running, walking. You can understand that I have a dog, right? And then weight training. And here I am visualizing the number of minutes. Well, I think this feature opens up so many new possibilities. Please let me know in the comments of the video which other use cases have you found for charts. And well, that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.